Is Stranger Things your favorite show on Netflix? Oh, good. Because behind today's secret door, we're going to take it to 11. With the Aberrant Mind Sorcerer Test Drive, Part 2. So behind today's secret door, the Aberrant Mind Sorcerer Test Drive, Part 2. This is Secret Door, a channel devoted to in-depth discussion about Dungeons & Dragons. My name is Matt Morich. Okay, so if you... I'm hoping that you saw Part 1 of the Aberrant Mind. Uh, If you haven't, maybe you should go see that first. (laughs) Because there's a lot of mechanical considerations for this class. So please watch... Part one before going any further. I am going to henceforth assume that you have seen it. Um, so the test drive, of course, will we've already talked about all the, the huge mechanical considerations, and we've already talked about the role-playing considerations. However, there are a couple of things that didn't quite make it from my notes to the video from the first part of the test drive, which I'd like to include here. They're very, very brief. The bulk of this video will cover levels 10 through 20 in the snapshots. It will also cover, very briefly, uh, some key magic items that I think are worth considering. But before we even get started, let me make a couple of announcements slash corrections from the previous video. There were a couple of minor little errors in that video. They weren't enough for me to pull the video, but I I, I just want to make sure that you're aware of it. Henceforth, I will always be putting any kind of minor mistake in the pinned comments. So you can check the pinned comments there for those mistakes because I've already put them there. But I'm just going to go ahead and tell you what they are right now. The first one is the most embarrassing to me, really. And that is that uh, one of one of the viewers pointed out that I, at, at one point, uh, as we we're picking the character, I suggest that you might want to take Resilient. And that's a perfectly logical thing for a full caster to do, which is why I suggested it. However, (laughs) it doesn't make a lick of sense for the sorcerer to take resilient when the sorcerer is already proficient with the constitution save. And I knew that, but somehow spaced it. And thank you, viewer, for pointing that out because that, yeah, don't take the resilient feed. You don't need it. So sorry about that. And another, uh, this is again a minor error. When we get to level nine in the in the previous video, I mentioned that you get two spell slots, and of course you only get one at level nine. For some reason, what as I was talking, I was thinking that, that was at the six level spells that that only getting one slot was when that began, but I was wrong. It, it starts at fifth level, so um, just bear that in mind. So. Uh, Effectively, you would be getting nine fifth-level castings if you traded out all of your spell slots for sorcery points at level nine. So just to kind of explain to you all how these little errors pop up, I shoot these videos by myself. I do not script them. I have notes that I refer to. I'm not doing all of this sheerly from memory, but I'm doing a lot of it from memory. So while the errors I have made so far in the in the this last video, and I'm sure I'll make one in this video, uh, or in in previous videos like the genie, they are they're minor errors. But I don't like making errors, and I certainly don't like having them out on video. But you usually find out that it's an error because I'm doing this by myself after you've already shot the video. And if the video is solid, if I liked how it came out, I'm I'm loath to want to reshoot it over a minor thing. So I hope that's okay with all of you. I, As long as I'm clarifying where there is an error, I hope that's good for you. If it's not, please put it in the comments below because I do want to put quality content out and it's very important to me. Uh, and I don't want anybody running on bad information, certainly not coming from me. So like I said, I, if, if it were a big error, 
I think I just pull the video and reshoot it, but these all seem pretty minor errors. So I, uh, I hope you're good with that. That's how it will go. So the one role-playing thing I wanted to bring up, and this is a really small point, but it, I felt like it probably was worth putting in here. Um, this is, uh, remember I said that there are three basic considerations of how you could approach role-playing for the Aberrant Mind Sorcerer. I am of the opinion that I would pick the, I was just born with it option. Well, this is something I would do in addition to the, I was just born with it. I would say that I had this power since I was in the womb. I was telepathic in the womb. Now, stop and think about that for a second, folks. <laughs> Your poor mother. <laughs> you don't even have a language yet. <laughs> and you're probably not crying in her head all the time, but you're, who knows we, all the, the whatever noise that you would be making mentally, she would be hearing and not having any idea why this is happening. She doesn't know that you're psionic. So yeah, your mother could end up being driven mad from that experience. And just think about trying to raise you. So people come over to the house and there you are. Uh, they've put you down to bed and, and there, there's no sound being coming out of, the, of your room at all. But your mother's going crazy because all she hears is crying. But there is no crying because you're not crying, not out loud, at least. You're just telepathically sending it at mom while you're laying there. And everybody else thinks you're just this little angel. And your mother knows that you're crying and crying and crying. I, I just imagine trying to raise a child and such a thing. Now, I will, <laughs> I like this idea. It really doesn't give you much to play, which is one of my primary considerations. But it is one of those little touches in your uh, the backstory for your character. And I'm not the biggest fan of backstories, but it it spices up. I was just born with it a touch, so I thought it was worth mentioning. The other thing I wanted to mention here, when we get to the concept of the battery, which we get at level six, I, I call it the battery. It's psionic sorcery. When we get the battery and how it takes off at level nine. There's a power move in the battery that's very efficient in points that I, I meant to point out and didn't. So it's good, good enough to put it here, I think. So one of the most efficient things you could do would be to twin Tasha's hideous laughter. And because it's a first level spell, to twin it only costs another point. So for two points, you're going to be able to potentially incapacitate two targets. Now it should be pointed out that Tasha's suffers from the same problem that hold person does in that you're getting a saving throw at the end of each of the rounds. But we're talking about a first level spell here. Hold person's a second level spell. Now, having said that with hold person, twinning hold person isn't a bad power move either. That would cost you four points. And then of course you have them paralyzed, which is far, far worse than incapacitated. So those are the really economical choices. Uh, if you're wanting to use twin, those are really economical, good choices to, uh, to use from the battery in your psionic spell list. Okay, so before we get to the level by level, let's talk about a few magic items that I think you should know about. I did not know about two of these because they both come from Tasha's and I'll be completely honest with you, the magic items were the least of my concerns with Tasha's. My nose has been in the classes nonstop and to another degree spells, of course. Those are my primary things that I'm concerned about right now. So one of uh, the viewers from part one, Colby Howard, had put in the comments these two items that I didn't even know about. And man, is he right. These are great. So thank you, Colby. And everybody else, thank Colby. <laughs> Put in the comments, thank you, Colby. Okay, so the first item is the Shadowfell Shard. This is a rare item. So it's going to be a little bit harder to come by than the item I'm going to mention next. But it's still within that realm of gettability. It's rare. So here, the Shadowfell Shard... <laughs> 
if you cast a spell and you've used meta magic on it now, so something at least like subtle, but not from your psionic spell or your psionic sorcery feature, even though that's effectively subtle, it is not technically meta magic. So something with actual meta magic on it. If you cast a spell with meta magic on it, that creature is cursed by you. You choose an ability score, and that creature has disadvantage on all ability checks and saving throws of that ability score until the end of your next turn. All ability scores, all saving throws until the end of your next turn. Shadowfell Shard is a broken item. It's, I, it, it makes me wonder, there's so much in Tasha's that was done so beautifully. And there's so much where I just wonder, did anybody stop anybody? Did anybody play test anything? Because stuff like that, that's, that's not right. So, <laughs> is it powerful? Well, oh, yeah, it's, it's crazy powerful. Colby was right to point this out. This is a class-specific item for sorcerers. It's, it, it, it's broken. Straight up and down, broken. And I, I, it's a trend in Tasha's towards... Ah, let's just let them have everything. What ends up happening is the game can get destroyed. I'm not an alarmist. I'm all for playing very powerful characters, and I'm certainly all for having really powerful magic items. But this is a disproportionately powerful magic item. There's no check against it. There's no amount of uses per day. It's just boom. So if you are going to give DMs out there, if you are going to give a player Shadowfell Shard, be aware that you're giving them their big magic item. This is a huge magic item. Be aware. And the next one I'm going to mention is the same way. And please don't give them both of these. Give them one or the other. And I, I would suggest if you're dead set on giving them one, give them the next one I'm going to mention. So the next magic item is the Bloodwell Vial. The Bloodwell Vial is a spellcasting focus, and it comes in three different uh, rarity types. So there's uncommon, rare, and very rare. And it's plus, will be plus one, plus two, plus three, respectively. So that plus is going to give you a plus to your spell attack rolls and to your DCs. That's always great. But what the Bloodwell Vial does that is insane is that on any short rest where you spend hit dice to get hit points back, you gain five sorcery, you, you recover five sorcery points. Five sorcery points. The lowest level, which is not effective, the lowest level of this is uncommon. They all do the same thing with those five sorcery points, as if that were a trivial thing. You put this in the hands of an aberrant mind sorcerer, you that's a fifth level casting <laughs> from the battery. <laughs> it's a free fifth level spell. Every time you take a short rest, you're effectively like getting half packed magic from a warlock from an uncommon magic item. That's all you need, by the way. Uh, if you're a player trying to angle for this, go for the uncommon one. Don't get greedy. You don't need the plus two or the plus three. Go for the uncommon. Go get it. Five sorcery points at a short rest, not a day. When we get to our 20th level feature, you will see how broken this is. This is why I'm saying I, I am not an alarmist. I really am not. There are things in Tasha's that are just completely out of your mind crazy that it ever actually saw the light of day. This and Shadowfell Shard and a couple of other things that I haven't even gotten to in videos yet, they're out of your mind crazy. So DMs, please hand these two items out with great care. 
players, of course, try and get them as best you can. And so the last magic item that I'm going to recommend is another uncommon item. And this one, DMs, I I think you could hand it out, uh, the Pearl of Power. The only reason I'm mentioning this here is I, I, I think the Pearl of Power, I'm not saying it's completely overlooked. It's not. But it's often overlooked. And what you can do with the Pearl of Power is you can recover up to a third level spell slot. Once you do it, it's... It's done for the day, but that's another up to third level spell slot for you. And again, that's three sorcery points for you. So it could be used to help cast a a higher level spell in the battery, or you could use it for three first level spells, three tushes, three sleeps, three whatever, three shields. Well, not shields, it's not in the psionic battery, but you get the picture. So I I like it. It's also uncommon, uh, relatively easy to find, and it synergizes well. it synergizes with any caster, but it you get a little bit more benefit because of the battery. Okay, so we're going to start the level by level. I, from here on, this is going to be pretty quick, folks. So I suspect this video will be uh, much, much shorter than the first one. All the conceptual work was done in the first video. We're just covering this for a sense of completion. And just to give you an idea, you know, is this character fun to play at level 17? Or is it fun to play at level 15? That, that type of thing. Okay, so level 10, uh, now we get our second level, or I'm sorry, our second fifth level spell slot. And what I'm going to suggest, and we're, we, we're going to take, we're going to trade out and get Wall of Stone. Now, how I would describe the Wall of Stone, if it were me, if there were rocks anywhere nearby, I would describe the spell's effect as telekinetically all these rocks are are being assembled into place like you know obviously very very fast like lightning creating where however the line of the wall is that you're going to create i just like that and if if there's not enough rocks around to physically do it well then you just contact the weave but if at all possible i i just like that image so i thought that was worth pointing out so spell wise that's what we get obviously we're we're done with this i uh, the psionic spell list. We also get a new meta magic. So here, I'm assuming we took twinned. Now I would take heightened. We could have also traded it out at level eight. If uh, subtle, we could have traded that out at level eight. If you did trade it out, I would go ahead and put subtle back in because you still have other spells that you might want to cast subtle with. Subtle has a lot of uses. Just because you can do it for free on your psionic spell list doesn't devalue the power of subtle. Okay, level 11, Uh, we get our sixth level spells and we get one slot from here on out. Everything is just going to be one slot. So I don't think it's going to be a big surprise what I'm going to say we should take at sixth level. We're going to take mass suggestion. And mass suggestion is so thematic for you. Oh my goodness. Uh, Only the enchantment wizard could be equally thematic with you that I can think of. Mass suggestion, an encounter ending spell. Mass suggestion. All right, 12th level. I'm going to suggest uh, for a spell to look at scatter. Scatter is not one of those spells that leaps out at you. But when when you really look at what it can do, it can kind of end an encounter as well. It can wreck one in any case by just reorganizing the battlefield. And if you're if you're part of a party that plays tactically very well, this is a really good strategic spell, which will open up really good tactical play. And of course, at 12th level, we get our ASI. I think there's only one pick to take. Lucky. Lucky is one of the best feats in the game. Many people think it's the best feat in the game. I I can't argue with that. I I don't personally think it's the best, but ooh, it's good. And Lucky serves to really help us shore up our our saving throws if we do fail them for uh for concentration. We can always use one of those luck points to reroll. We should be making them most of the time, and because we have alert, we're not going to be making as many. But if we do fail one, we've got Lucky in our back pocket, and Lucky serves a much better purpose. It helps us make other failed saving throws, ones that could be disastrous, more disastrous than concentration. Let me emphasize again that concentration for 
the Aberrant Mind Sorcerer, is not that big of a whoop. Losing a spell slot, an active spell slot, it's on concentration. You've got so many castings that losing the, the slot is like, well, okay, I'll throw it again. <laughs> it's just not that big of a deal. And this also is a good point. You know, what are you doing with your rounds when you're not casting? I am going to suggest, I mean, you can cast a cantrip and do some damage and all that, but if, if you don't have a spell that you're going to cast and you've got your action to use, take the dodge action. The dodge action is really underrated. And again, that will help you from having to make more concentration saves because you'll probably not, not get hit. So I would consider that. And, you know, obviously you want to be casting as much as you can, but there's going to be rounds where you just don't have anything really to do with your action. I would consider that. Or maybe look at strategically. Is a dash a good thing to do? Getting to a certain spot or getting away while your concentration spell is up or, or what have you. So it's important with this guy because I'm not a big fan of cantrip damage. Mind Sliver, in your case, can be really good because it can help... Uh, set up a bad saving throw for a target. And it it may not even be a saving throw that you're going to be casting against. It could be another party member. So you could be a good teammate in that sense. So Mind Sliver is also obviously a good choice for that. But I think with the Aberrant Mind, with all the castings, you're probably going to be casting quite a bit of your actions, but there's going to be a round or two in any given combat where I think you're just going to go, now what do I do? Think about dodge, or if you are going to cast a cantrip, I would favor Mind Sliver. Okay, 13th level. We get our 7th level spells, and we get our one 7th level spell slot. There's a couple of decent spells on 7th level. It's a kind of a disappointing list for the Sorcerer. The two standouts to me are Teleport or Plane Shift. And you could make the case for either one of them. So I would prioritize one, one of those two uh, over the rest. The, the combat spells, yeah, you've got plenty. I mean, you're going to be, through the battery, you're going to always have a synaptic static to cast. And, and remember that when you're doing that, when I was talking about Mind Sliver, that's Mind Sliver as well. But uh, I believe it's a D6 on the synaptic static. So for those who failed their saving throw. So you're going to be debuffing a lot with this character because you're just going to be able to cast an aptic static anytime you want while you're doing some damage. Granted at 13th level 8d6 is not that much damage, but it's still an area of effect spell and it's debuffing. It's a great spell and you're probably going to be using it a lot. I would imagine almost every combat. So what you want from your spell, your spells list now is more and more utility and teleport and plane shift do that. Okay, 14th level. We get a sorceress origin feature here, and we, what we get is revelation in flesh. Uh, I have gone back and forth on how good I think this feature is. At first, I thought, oh, it's pretty good. Let me back up. What does it do? <laughs> it gives you the option of spending a sorcery point. If you spend a sorcery point, you get to choose from a table of effects you get you could you could spend multiple sorcery points and get multiple effects but you for one sorcery point you get to choose one of those effects and it lasts for 10 minutes one of them is flying with hover so that's obviously good but it's not even as good of a feature as the genie gets at 6th level and i hate i hate comparing class features by comparing them to other classes class features but in this one, I just kind of went like, it's so jarring, the similarity there. The difference being, of course, that with the genie, there really isn't any limitation other than the amount of times a day you can do it with the proficiency bonus. And sorcery points are precious, even to this character, especially to this character. But one point for 10-minute flight with hover, that's pretty good. So I went back and forth you know, is it any good? Is it is it bad? I kind of went, it's kind of like a trap, but then I realized, look, 
you can the other things you can do you can see invisibility you're able to uh also one of the features you can squeeze through a, a space that's as small as one inch or you can gain a swimming speed so none of those other ones other than flying are they're not going to come up that much but where i finally ended up with revelation in flesh is it's actually pretty good and the reason i'm saying that is yeah, all of those powers, they're not all that great. But they are going to be great when you need them. If you need to have a swimming speed, you've got it. If you need to be able to fly, of course, that's always often going to be advantageous. And you have hover. And it's no concentration. That's another huge bonus. That's great. I mean, that that's definitely great. And that ability to squeeze through an inch or escape a grapple for free, you know, five feet of movement, it'll cost you. Uh, or to es escape a restraint. Good. Those are all good. And if they come up, they're going to be really good. They're going to be very valuable. So what do we call that, Matt? Utility. It's a utility feature. And I know I'm that may be just stating the obvious, but for a 14th level feature, you're often expecting more than just utility. However, we're talking about a sorcerer here. We're talking about a class that historically is strapped for utility. They have to take the best spells they can possibly take. So this is another way of accessing spell-like effects that would replicate a spell without having to it, it rub, rub up against your spells known. So in the end, I think Revelation in Flesh, while not necessarily setting the barn on fire, it's a really good Swiss Army Knife feature. Okay, level 15, we get access to eight bubble spells. We get one eight bubble slot, and we're going to pick Dominate Monster. The, the pickings are slim again. Dominate Monster, if it works, and of course, if you've taken Heightened Spell, you probably want to go ahead and cast that with uh, with this. Or if you got the Shadowfell Shard, you just cast Subtle and get a disadvantage. Because if it succeeds, it if the spell succeeds, if the creature fails, this is again, an encounter. It, it, it may not end the encounter, but it could very well turn the encounter around. So dominate monsters. It's hard to gainsay that the problem is of course, if they make the saving throw, nothing happens with your eight bubble spell slot. So 16th level, we get our ASI. I'm going to suggest that we go ahead and take Meta Magic Adept feat. I don't think we're getting all that much out of it, but I'm taking it for another reason, which you'll see in a minute. What we are getting at, we're going to get two sorcery points, which would normally be totally worth it, but those sorcery points can only be used on Meta Magic. So in this case, probably two castings of Subtle for free, which again, they're there's going to be spells we're going to be wanting to cast that are not on the psionic spell list. So two free castings of subtle. I'll, I'll take that. And we get to pick two new meta magic, two new meta magics of your choice. So, you know, empowered spell, since we're going to be doing area of effect spells, damage spells, it's not bad. It's not earth shattering or anything like that, but it's not bad. And then, you know, pick what you like, it's left. So yeah, I, I would prioritize Empowered Spell. That would just be me. But that's really not why we're taking the meta magic. We're taking it for those two points and for what's going to happen at the next level. Okay, level 17. Now it should be noted that from about level 14 on, you are very unlikely to ever even see these levels. But boy, if you make it to level 17, this is virtually the capstone of any arcane caster that makes level 17 that has this spell available to it. We're taking, of course, Wish. I'm probably one day going to make a video just about Wish, but I don't want to belabor Wish here. I'm just simply going to say the first thing you would, I would al almost an exclusively use Wish for its replication of an eighth level spell or lower. And in this case, I would use it to cast Simulacrum. Simulacrum is an, an amazingly powerful spell. And 
simulacrum, as I, I mentioned using this with the genie for, with Wish as well, like the genie, your simulacrum will still have some use after its spell slots are all exhausted. Why? Because at level 17, you've got 17 sorcery points. Those are not spell slots. You get them back. So with the battery, every day, you're going to be able to cast 17 sorcery points worth of spells from your psionic spell list with your simulacrum. That makes the simulacrum much more useful than normal. Not quite, in my opinion, as useful as the warlocks, but it's good. I mean, that's three fifth level castings. That could, that could be three telekinesis. That could be three synaptic static, and then you'd have two points left over. And of course, we took the metamagic adept feat so that we could also use two castings of subtle on top of it. So Wish, of course, by itself, regardless of whether you use it for simulacrum, is a magnificent spell, very, very versatile. That, that casting of using it for an eighth level slot of any spell in the game is the ultimate in flexibility. But I would immediately cast it on Simulacrum, and I would be laughing all the way to the bank because one of the most powerful classes in the game right now just got more powerful. We also get another meta magic. Uh, extended spell would be one I would look at. I mean, we've got so many now. <laughs> but extended spell, uh, and you might have even wanted to take this back at, at the uh, meta magic adept. Telekinesis lasts 10 minutes. For one sorcery point, it'll last for 20. Now, if you're in a dungeon situation, a 20-minute duration, that's really good. That's definitely two rooms. Could even be three rooms. So using six sorcery points to cast telekinesis with that for 20 minutes, that's a, that's a really good value. Okay, 18th level. Uh, here we're probably wanting to look at swapping in and getting another nine couple spell. Time stop. I like time stop. Um, I don't like it as much as I like wish, but we're also having to look at what's available to us on the sorcerer list. Time stop is available. Wish is clearly the best. I'm going to mention meteor swarm because it just does an insane amount of damage. But Meteor Swarm is also a very, very difficult spell to fit in. It's It doesn't play nice with uh, dungeon delving. <laughs> so if you're in a very dungeon-rich environment, um, Meteor Swarm has a 40-foot radius. That's a lot of room in a room. So, <laughs> and it's got four of those. So, I mean, they can't overlap or even to stack on top of each other. But it is doing 20d6 and 20d6, so it's a lot of damage. Time stop is much more thematic to me, and getting multiple rounds in a row, it's just, that's just great. So at 18th level, we also get our last sorceress feature from Aberrant Mind, Warping Implosion. I think the designers either think that this is a really good ability or they're trying to word it in such a way that it seems to be a really great ability. I don't think it's all that good or if it's even very much to write home about. Warping implosion. So uh, as an action, you can teleport. And when you teleport, everyone within every creature, every creature within 30 feet of you must make a strength saving throw or take 3d10 damage and be pulled in towards the space that you just left. If they, if they make the save, uh, they take half the damage and are not pulled. This has some uses. It has some 3d10 at level 18 is nothing that's so you're not doing this for the damage you're using it as an escape teleport obviously so in that sense 
Sure. Useful. But you're also potentially hosing your teammates. It's a 30-foot radius from you. Every creature. And in my opinion, at 18th level, if you are getting caught in a situation <laughs> with everything you can do, if you're getting caught in a situation where you are, you feel the need to use this ability, you are probably not playing the sorcerer very well. I will say this. It's possible to get ambushed. It's possible for those kind of things to happen. And in those kind of cases, maybe. You also have the potential with this ability to set up a, a after, but it's an action. So yeah, they're going to get to move after this. So there is a possibility, you know, you've pulled everybody towards uh, the point that you left. An area of effect spell on that area would be great. But of course, you've spent your action. Maybe a teammate could take advantage of that. There are. There's going to be loose end possibilities for using this action, using this ability. It's an 18th level ability. Now, I'm not complaining. I don't, I don't really care in a when I'm looking at a class, if it's reasonably useful as an ability, okay. And that's how I feel about this. Okay. You know why? Because we've got the psionic spell list. And we got psionic sorcery. And that's all we... And then we got revelation in flesh, which is a, a little bit of utility. So I'm not going to complain <laughs> and cry, oh, this ability stinks. I don't understand people that analyze that way. Is this a great ability? It isn't. No. But what more do you want? What more do you want? So... Not not the biggest fan of this ability, but it potentially has some use. And that's all that needs to be said for it. Okay, 19th level, we get our ASI. I mean, you do whatever you want here. I, I think, honestly, I would just bump my con. Maybe if nobody had taken Inspiring Leader by this point, maybe you take Inspiring Leader. <laughs> you're all a charisma character. I mean, and you're getting the good level value for it. It's really late to be taking inspiring leader, but I'd probably just bump my con. I, you're, it's always going to be helpful. So yeah, not very exciting. I know. And finally, 20th level, here we are. And we get our capstone sorcerer feature, sorceress restoration. When you take a short rest, you regain four sorcery points. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, a capstone feature for a class that is outdone by an uncommon magic item in Tasha's. I'll take it. I'm not going to lie, I'll take it. But it's almost insulting that this uncommon magic item is, is outperforming your capstone feature. Which also points out how ridiculously powerful that Bloodwell Bile is. That's just nuts. So. This really begs the question, at level, after level 17, do you multi-class? I think you stay in this class, definitely you stay probably to level 10, for sure. But because, because you can get to wish, I think the carrot is pretty strong there to get to wish. Your six level spell is, is really good. So mass suggestion, I mean, maybe it's a must stick to 11 and Maybe after that, you could multi-class. Uh, it, it really just kind of depends on how much you like Wish. I mean, our 7th level and ninth, 8th uh, level spells, they're okay. I mean, they're, they're good. Wish is obviously fantastic. The other thing that you are getting by continuing with the Sorcerer is, of course, you're getting more Sorcery points, and that's invaluable. So I think I would stick... To level 17 for sure. And I'd probably just stick with it and go to 20. If if the campaign lasted that long, I'd just probably stick to 20. You know, at that point, whatever you're multi-classing into, I don't even have, I'm not even going to try and speculate as to what you would multi-class into. It, it, it would have to be something that you got a really quick bump out of that would be meaningful to you at first or at most second level. Um, 
So like if you took fighter and that second level of fighter, you're getting action surge and that doubles your ability to cast when you, when you use it. I mean, that's good. And then it's impactful. Um, and of course you get access to armor and all that, but yeah, I think I just, I just stayed at 20. All right, folks, that's the aberrant mind sorcerer. If you enjoyed this video, please like, please share, please subscribe, please uh, leave something in the comments. And remember to thank Colby <laughs> for the Bloodwell vial and the Shadowfell shard. They say thanks, Colby. Um, yeah, so please subscribe. The, the channel really needs your support. Uh, we're just over four months old now. Uh, it seems like it's been shorter and longer at the same time. But yeah, just over four months old. So I would really appreciate your support if you are cool with giving it. And if you're stuck and you don't know where to go, you can always search for a secret door. Until next time, I cast bless on all of you.